This video is going to go through doing some data analysis uh, with the wooden cubes using Microsoft Excel. So we're starting out with the spreadsheet that has all of the cube measurements for all of the students. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a new sheet at the bottom. And we're going to I'll put a title on it, Population Analysis. Central tendencies. Make that a little bit bigger. I want to calculate several central tendencies or measures of centralness of the numbers. I want to calculate the mean, the median, the mode, the minimum, and the maximum, and the range, and also the standard. Deviation. Calculate the mean. We use the formula average. So I type equals and start typing average. It'll auto populate the different formulas that start with that. You can choose the one you want and press tab and then go to your data sheet. And you're going to select all of the data fields and press enter. Similarly, with median and mode. Choose the uh, third mode one here. And the minimum and the maximum. And the range is simply going to be the difference between the maximum, so put the maximum field minus the minimum. Standard deviation, um, for all of the data, we're going to use the standard deviation of a population. There's two types of standard deviation. Standard deviation of a population and standard deviation of a sample. When you do your own numbers, you're going to use the sample one, but we're going to use the standard of P for population. Choose that one, and then all of the values. And that gives us our standard deviation for our numbers. All right, next thing we want to do is um, create a chart on our table of standard deviations. We're going to have um, the mean in the center, and then three standard deviations to either side of it. So I'm just going to type in minus three standard deviation. Notice I put the single quote first, because otherwise it's going to think I'm trying to type a formula. Minus two. These are just labels I'm putting in. And then I'm going to do plus and I want to fill these in. So the mean is simply going to be this value up here. And then the standard deviation minus 1 is going to be the mean minus the standard deviation. So I'll do equals this, minus this. And then the next one is going to be minus two standard deviations. So I can do this field, minus this. And then the third one can be this field, minus this. The other ones will be similar, but adding instead. So it will be this one. this field plus the standard deviation and then it will be this field plus the standard deviation and then it will be this field plus the standard deviation and now I have the standard deviation 
uh, the mean and then two, three standard deviations less than the mean and three standard deviations above the mean. Um, next, I want to see what a normal distribution would look like with these values, um, with this mean and this standard deviation. So I'm going to create a set of sample data using the data analysis tool pack. Uh, to do that, I'm going to um, go to data and I don't have data analysis here, so I gotta turn that on. So I'm going to go to File, Options, Add-ins, and Manage the Add-ins. I want the standard analysis tool packs on, so I'll turn those on. And now I have data analysis. I wanna do a random number generation. I want it to be a normal distribution. One variable with 10,000 numbers. The mean is going to be 0.75795 from right here. And the standard deviation is going to be 0 0.006884. I'll put it in a new worksheet fly called random numbers. And press OK. So that creates for me a set of random numbers based on a normal distribution having 0.75795 as the mean and a deviation of 0 0.006884. And it puts it in this new sheet. So here's this new sheet created called random numbers. And if I go control end, it'll bring me down the bottom. You can see there's 10,000 values. So with my standard deviation table there, I want to create a histogram counting up those numbers. Before I can do that, I need a set of bins. And the way the bins work, I want to actually get the center of each of these areas. So I'm going to add half of a standard deviation to each one. So to do that, I'll do a formula equals this cell plus 0 0.5 times the standard deviation. And before I press enter there, I'm going to add dollar signs in front of the B and the H for that standard deviation cell. The reason for that is now I can drag this down and it's going to keep that B and H the same while it's going to increment the other ones. So these will be my bins. So now I can do a count of how many values fall within each of those bins using the frequency form. So I'll do equal frequency. And I want my data array, which is going to be all my random numbers. I can hold down control and press end. Shift control and press end, and that will select all of them. And press enter. And it gives an error because I didn't finish the function, so I'll press OK, go up here, put a comma, and then highlight all of my bins. Now to propagate this formula all through the other ones, I can't just click on the little corner. But there's a shortcut I can use. I can drag this down here, put my cursor up in the formula bar, and press Shift, Control, and Enter all at the same time, and then propagates it through. So here is my count here, and now I can make a diagram of this, or a graph of this. To do the graph, I will highlight both the um, standard deviation values and the normal count values by holding down, which I'll just do the table here, put on control to select multiple areas, and then go to insert a column graph, 2D column graph, and here is my normal count, the standard deviation. You can see it very closely follows that normal standard deviation curve. Now I want to check to see how close the data that we've collected matches this. So I'm going to do another count here, but this time it's going to be the actual data. So I'll do the same formula, equals frequency. This time the data array is going to be all of the cube measurements in this data table. So I'll select them all. Finish the formula by putting in the bins. 
highlight them all, and press shift control enter. Now we can see our distribution there, and I can do another chart. Select both sets of data there and go to insert column graph, and it creates another chart. So now we have the normalized count with a normal distribution of sample random data, and then an actual count standard deviation display showing where all of our cubes fall. Um, to continue, you're going to do the same, uh, but you're going to do it with just your set of data and calculate all of these values using a sample standard deviation and choose just your set of data.